With the interior now finished and me probably postponing doing the actual bodywork, I decided to move on to the chassis. So firstly, a lot of the chassis pieces needed to be assembled. It comes in multiple bigger pieces that all combine into the long stretching piece from front to back. Additionally to the main bigger pieces, there are also some small sub-assemblies, in this case the rear axle, which also needed to be assembled. I wasn't really a fan of the actual color, so I decided just to assemble it, sand some of the edges smooth, and paint it flat black before moving on to some more assembly. If you, just like me, are used to building 124th or 125th scale model kits, the plastic versions, then building a kit like this is an absolute eye-opener detail-wise. The amount of attention they spent on detailing out the chassis and making a lot of these parts actually functional, like these leaf springs, is insane. The main drive shaft is made out of the same plastic that the rear axle was, so that was assembled, then sanded down and painted flat black just to make it not look that plasticky. So not all of the pieces are detailed 360 degrees, specifically this piece for the transmission is just detailed from the underside or the top side depending on where you're looking at it of course, but that isn't really that big of a deal as it is still nicely color coded, fits in, and it shows all the detail that needs to be shown. These specific parts that I'm installing here are incorrect and they will be getting in my way further on in the build, so it is important just to be very closely paying attention to the instructions and putting the parts in the way they are supposed to. These just need to be flipped around to the other side as they are now just a little bit in my way later on when I'm assembling the engine bay. So the kit comes with a set of standard wheels. This has a white wall tire, a really nice wheel design, and overall it looks pretty good. Now I myself was really a fan of the white wall on the tire and I thought the wheels were a bit too narrow, so I decided to opt for the optional extra set, which is a lot wider of a setup all round and has a bit of a more open look wheel design. And overall, I think it fits the design of the model that I'm gonna be building a lot better. So let's change those out. So if you're just following along with the instructions and building it step by step as you should, some of these pieces are just put together and then later on in another different section of the build they need to be disassembled a little bit for some other parts to fit in. In order to fit the rear section of the exhaust in, this center section of the floor pan needed to be removed, so a lot of screws were undone, then the exhaust was uh, assembled and put in place, and then later on that section of the floor pan can be put back in. The center section of the exhaust is now installed as well, and that pretty much finishes up the main assembly for the chassis, so the interior could be combined with it. 
So all of the door panels and even the trunk and hood can open on this model in the end. So it is important to finish out all of the details too. So the trunk was also included in there, a couple of pieces for the back and the side. And then a nice little detail was the spare tire and the jack that needed to be put in as well. With the chassis and interior now combined to the trunk finished up, it's time to move on to the engine bay and start those sub-assemblies. The radiator is now finished so we can move on to the main engine part itself. Firstly starting off with the air cleaner that is made out of different parts, it has a nice mesh piece in it so that gives it a bit of an extra dimension. Most of the main engine pieces are actually made out of metal. Some are chrome, some are silver, and some are just left in the actual metal color. But overall, it gives a really nice weight or heft to the engine itself, and it fits in with the scale of the build really well. Now that the main block is assembled, some additional details can be put on as well. And of course, some plug wires need to be installed too. So normally I wouldn't be too fussed about specific firing orders on these actual engines. I just like the additional detail of adding a bit of wire and with a 124th or 25th scale kit, it isn't really all that visible in the end. Now with this being a super, super big kit, it is important to follow the wiring instructions and wire it up properly so I don't get complaints from some of you guys, of course. Now luckily in the instructions, it is really easy to follow. You just need to cut them to length and then uh, wire them properly. They are color coded in the instructions so that is really easy to follow and should be properly done of course. Earlier on in the build when finishing the main floor piece, I mentioned that some of these side spats were mounted incorrectly and they actually interfered by putting in the engine bay parts themselves. So those were flipped around quickly for the engine bay parts to be put in and then I could move on to the other side. The actual finished model does have some sound effects, so there is a small speaker included and of course a lot more wires, actual functioning springs and other stuff that needs to be connected and put together properly for it all to fit together. To power all of those sound effects and lights up, there of course need to be some batteries installed as well, so let's do that now. Actually, it is a really cool detail that the actual battery fits over the part where you need to put the batteries in. That's a really nice touch. On the side of the engine bay, there is a small circuit board with a lot of the wires for all of the lights, the sound effects, and all the other stuff. These are all labeled with numbers, and the other side is labeled with numbers too, so it's really easy just to connect and hook those up together. With the wires hooked up, the chassis and interior now both finished. I couldn't prolong this any further and I need to start on stripping all of the parts. Now some parts are made out of plastic and just need to be sanded. Other bigger parts like the hood and the main body, even the door panels and the trunk lid are made out of metal and these need to be stripped with metal or paint stripper in this case. Now it does take a bit of time and as you can see this thing is pretty huge. So give me a little bit before all of these are painted. 
Since I want to do a really proper job on painting the exterior, I'm just going to take my time and not put this on the forefront of my build. So I'm just going to do this as a bit of a side project and hope to be finishing it in a short period, of course, but I'm not going to be rushing it. As you can see, the main color of the body was white with a blue stripe. All of the panels match up really nicely and have a super smooth finish. So if you wanted to decide just to leave it stock, just as well as it is already a super cool smooth finish that doesn't really need any adjusting or fixing whatsoever. So all of the rest of the parts were now being uh, put into some paint stripper and the main painting process will begin. Now as I said it will be taking a bit of time so don't expect the videos to come out anytime soon but I will be back in due course. 